Good afternoon, uh, or uh, still good morning, actually. Uh, welcome to Boston City Hall and the Boston City Council Chambers. I am Anissa Asaivi George, Councilor at Large and Chair of the Committee on Homelessness, Mental Health and Recovery. I'd like to remind everyone in the chamber that this hearing is being recorded and broadcast live on Comcast 8, RCN 82, and Verizon 1964. I ask that you please turn off your cell phones and anything else that can make noise. This hearing is, do is for docket number 1232 regarding a $4.92 million grant awarded to the Department of Neighborhood Services for the City of Boston's Youth Homelessness Demonstration Program by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. If you uh, would like to join us and testify today in person, I ask that you sign in um, and check off the box to speak. Uh, this morning we are joined by my colleague, Councillor Frank Baker. I'd like to welcome Courtney Trudell, Assistant Director for Supportive Housing for the Department of Neighborhood Development. On Tuesday, July 17, 2018, the City of Boston's Youth Homelessness Demonstration Program, which is created which has created the strategic plan to end youth and young adult homelessness in Boston, received a $4.92 million grant in federal funding from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. This is the largest grant of its kind um, that the city has received. We are very excited about this grant, very excited about this funding from, from HUD. Uh, my staff and I have been working closely with many of the organizations, individuals, city and state agencies, and the Youth Action Board on the strategic plan, with our focus being the community engagement portion of the strategic plan. Um, at both some of the planning meetings and then at the announcement of this funding, I met a young woman named Stephanie who has uh, four children like myself and has, I'm sorry, not four children like myself, two sisters like myself, and she talked, younger sisters, and talked um, quite affectionately about her relationship with him, with, with them, I'm sorry. And um, I just really want to encourage all of the Stephanies out there that find themselves experiencing homelessness um, and are also the caretakers and older siblings of, of younger people uh, how important that this work is for them and that we remember that as we we um, hear from you today, Courtney, and, and then put this, these funds to good use. I thank certainly the, the mayor and his, the administration for uh, applying for this funding and following through with it, with or without this money, that this work was going to happen um, in the city of Boston. So I hope um, that we can get to it. That's part of the purpose of today's hearing. I'm not sure if uh, Councilor Baker has any opening comments. No, and then. I'm, I'm Good. Very good. So, Courtney, if you wouldn't mind, please. Great. Good morning, councillors. Good morning. Uh, for the record, I am Courtney Trudell, Assistant Director for the Supported Housing Department at the Department of Neighborhood Development. I would like to begin by thanking uh, Councillor Sabi George for scheduling the hearing and her unwavering support for the work of the Department of Neighborhood Development in housing our most vulnerable homeless citizens. The order before us authorizes D&D on behalf of the city to accept and expend federal fiscal year 2017 funds awarded to the city by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development through its new Youth Housing Demonstration Program competition, YHDP. The funding will be received in the city of Boston fiscal year 19. These important funds are critical to the ongoing effort to end homelessness and housing instability for youth in Boston. On any given night, 360 unaccompanied youth and young adults experience homelessness in Boston. Recent counts have identified 3% are unsheltered in the winter months and up to 28% in the summer months. Between 25 and 39% identify as LGBTQ and approximately 50% are black and between 20 and 35% are Latinx. 22 to 30% of young women who are homeless or pregnant or parenting. These numbers do not reflect youth and young adults who are doubled up or couch surfing or attempting to flee dangerous situations such as domestic violence or sex trafficking. Boston was one of 11 communities selected by HUD and will collaborate with a broad array of partners to develop a community plan to prevent and end youth homelessness. The coordinated community plan assesses the needs of youth at risk of and experiencing homelessness in the community and addresses how it will use the money from the YHDP grant, along with other funding sources to address these needs. Plan development is underway and we currently have over 70 organizational partners represented, including Boston's Youth Action Board, 
the Department of Children and Families and other state agencies, nonprofit services providers, and several City of Boston departments. YHDP participation will inform the federal effort to prevent and end youth homelessness going forward, and Boston will serve as a leader on the work to end homelessness among young people. The funds are being used to fund, uh, to fund the completion of the coordinated community plan and projects identified in the plan to serve youth in households where no one is over the age of 24, including unaccompanied youth, pregnant, and parenting youth. Project funding may be used for rapid rehousing, permanent supportive housing, and transitional housing, and to fund innovative programs such as host homes. YHDP projects will have two-year grant terms and may be renewed under the Continuum of Care program if they meet program statutory requirements. After a four-month process of reviewing data, convening subcommittees, generating ideas, and receiving recommendations, Boston's Coordinated Community Plan is nearing its first draft. We anticipated the Coordinated Community Plan to be finalized by the end of this year and to be ready to use for implementation project funding in early 2019. In summary, HUD awarded the City of Boston $4.92 million to create a coordinated community plan and create innovative projects to serve youth experiencing homelessness and housing instability. The resources awarded through this application directly support the city's efforts to eliminate homelessness in Boston. The initial grant term for the award is three years, which includes time for us to create a, community, a coordinated community plan to assess the needs of youth at risk and experiencing homelessness, and to plan for the money from the YHDP grant, along with the other funding sources raised. YHDP funds one-year planning grants, and two-year implementation projects. Implementation projects may be renewed under the Continuum of Care program if they meet program statutory requirements, and the planning grants cannot be renewed. We are collaborating with a broad array of partners, including Boston's Youth Action Board, the Department of Children and Families and other state agencies, nonprofit youth service providers, and several City of Boston departments. Through the summer, Partners have been reviewing data, convening subcommittees, generating ideas, and receiving recommendations, and the plan is nearing its first draft. We anticipate the coordinated community plan to be finalized by the end of 2018 to be ready to use for project funding in early 2019. This concludes my overview of the YHDP program and its importance to Boston's youth experiencing homelessness and housing instability. Thank you, counselors, for your time and your attention. And where time is of the essence, we respectfully request action on this matter at the September 19th council meeting. I welcome any questions you have on this matter. Thank you very much, um, Courtney, for your presentation. Could you just uh, review what you did it earlier in your statement about the demographic breakdown of the 360? I try to take some notes, but I'd love if you could just repeat it again. So in any given night, we have about 360 uh, unaccompanied youth and young adults in Boston. And recent counts have uh, estimated about 3% of those are unsheltered in winter months and up to 28% in summer months. Uh, so between 25 and 39% identify as LBGTQ. And there's a variance due to the data source. Uh, approximately 50% are black and between 20 and 35% are Latinx. And then 22 to 30% of young women who are homeless are pregnant or parenting. And do we have any, you mentioned the doubled up and the youth experiencing domestic violence. Can you, do you have some of those numbers by any chance to share with us? I know they're not included in this particular grant, but that I know that this 360 is excluding them. Uh, they are included in the planning, in the coordinated community plan, um, and they could potentially have projects uh, targeted towards serving them. For specific numbers, I don't have those. But they're not right included now. in the 360. They are not included okay, in the 360. Okay, so th that's an additional number. Yes. They know one of the more difficult uh, counts to take, especially when we think about some of our um, high school students that attend school in Boston is that doubled up number. It's really hard because they're doubled up and because they technically have a place to stay in the evening and aren't seeking formal shelter, 
that we're unable to count them and get a real number of the impact um, of, the, of that population. Great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Councillor Baker. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? Good, good. Um, can you just kind of run down the overview of the co coordinated community plan? What is it? What, it, what like? What's the makeup of it, and what is the um, the end game? So before we knew we had YHDP money, the city of Boston was um, committed to having a community plan to address youth homelessness. So in April, we started a planning process, uh, which brought together the organizational partners um, for the community plan. We uh, broke it out into um, five subcommittees uh, to focus on housing interventions, um, uh, prevention and uh, services interventions, uh, permanent connections uh, for young people, um, trying to leverage additional funding sources, and then also an executive committee to oversee and guide that process at the committee level. Um, those subcommittees were structured based on um, what we anticipated the YHDP community plan was going to require so that we'd be in a good position if we were awarded and eventually are have been awarded those fundings that we could use that process in um, the the community plan that's required by HUD for this. Uh, in HUD's requirements, um, they're prescriptive on needing to define the need uh, and tying um, goals and projects to that need. And the um, and the partners are are the nonprofits in the area that do the work. Yes, so there's over 70 partners, uh, yeah. and it's a, a range of nonprofits, um, to, to name a few, Bridge Over Top of Waters, um, ROCA, um, uh, Silver Lining Mel Mentoring, St. Francis House, the Home for Little Wanderers. Yeah, it's yeah. a very wide range because there are a lot of services that are serving youth that have been involved in um, housing and stability for youth in different ways. Yeah, and, and um, so the, these organizations can apply for grants through this money here? Potentially. Okay. Potentially. Okay, and, and can you talk a little bit about how it can be used for housing? Like you mentioned rapid rehousing, would that be, can you just talk about like how this money would fit into um, any type of housing? Like how, how can we use it? So the committees are really decide, uh, designing the and deciding the, the projects and the types of housing projects that we would put YHDP funding towards. Um, I had listed rapid rehousing and permit supported housing and the others as examples, mm -hmm. um, but they could come up with a different type of housing design. Uh, depending on uh, what is prioritized uh, from the community plan, uh, those uh, projects uh, would be put out for procurement, they would be um, targeted to meeting a specific need for youth and homelessness. Um, if it was a project that also mirrored uh, projects that are eligible through the continuum of care competition, mm -hmm. um, at some point those could get renewed. So like a rapid rehousing project or a permanent supported housing project will get folded into that annual renewal process. Um, some things, like a host homes I mentioned, is yeah. a more innovative de design and currently doesn't fit into a renewal process through the continuum of care program. Um, so that, uh, that has a lot of flexibility in how it could look and how it can be tailored specifically to Boston's needs. Yeah. Um, so the 360, how do we come up with those numbers? Is that like, is it a census where we're, we're going out and finding them? We do several different types of counts um, for specifically for homeless youth and for uh, homeless individuals and homeless families in <clears throat> Boston. I can get you the details about where yeah. the 360. Because you would think some some kids wouldn't admit to being to being homeless. Yes. It's, yeah. So it's, it's probably a, a problem coming up with. I would venture it's more than that 360. Um, okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank no. you. Thank you, Councillor Baker, for your uh, questions, especially your concern about that 360 number. I think when we're thinking about homelessness in the city, individual, family, or young and youth, adult, youth and young adults, that the number is often very much underreported uh, because it's, it's difficult to have people step forward. Um, do we have anyone for public testimony? 
All right, so I think we'll uh, certainly recommend this favorably out of committee and, and take it up at our council meeting this Wednesday. Thank you. This Thank meeting you. is adjourned. Thank you. I can make one soon, Nadia.